1,000 to 1 million. This is how we're gonna get rich with options. Can we turn our $1,000 options portfolio into a million? What's up, guys? It is your boy, Jerome, back at it with another video. I've got one of my closest friends, Maddox, here with me today for a new show we're making here on the channel, uh, 1,000 to 1 million. This is how we're going to get rich with options. Maddox, say what's up to the people. What's up, people and consumers of Jerome's content? Uh, I do have some beef with that name. I, I think that we should be. Uh, Why? We should call Why? this one thousand to zero dollars. How not to get rich with options? We, we literally just lost like half of half of the viewers right now. What for being open and honest out here? <laughs> if you want clickbait, you can go elsewhere. True. True. Okay, so we already told you guys that we're gonna be trading options, but. Maddox, can you uh, explain to the people in just like the most basic of basic English um, what exactly options are and maybe like how they're different from traditional stocks? Well, before I get into that, just a friendly reminder that nothing that we are discussing here is investment advice and any views or opinions we express are merely our own and do not reflect the views or opinions of any businesses that we're affiliated with. Um, but yeah, on that question, uh, no, I can't actually explain that to you because <laughs> what a what a long that would up. require a lot of uh, mental effort because these things are complicated. So I'm gonna defer to Chat GBT to explain uh, what an options contract is. But um, good choice. So options are financial contracts that allow you to buy in the case of a call option or sell in the case of a put option an asset at a set price within a certain time and you pay a fee or a premium for this right and if you don't use it by the deadline it expires worthless so there you go so i i like to think of it as like a contract you know you have the the right to buy something or sell something at a certain price and uh if you don't like what that contract looks like at the t the day you're supposed to like execute that contract you don't have to right and more most importantly if uh if the price of that asset isn't above uh the strike price in the case of a call option or below the strike price in the case of a put option that options contract is essentially worthless because uh why would you you know buy an asset for less than it's currently trading for like no one would logically do that so uh you know those, those contracts become worthless and your investment essentially goes to zero if that's the case. Right, right. And so, um, you know, I'll, I'm curious, in your opinion, why are options even lucrative? Why, what, what drew you to options? Why do you want to trade options? Um, well, so I, you know, personally have been a market participant for going on seven years now and I'm just now kind of, getting into the options market it's important to kind of maybe explain the the couple of ways that i think that think about making money in financial markets um so yeah you know you can there, there's essentially two ways that you can go into the markets and and make money um you know you can just buy assets like you know uh just financial assets like stocks or bonds or gold or commodities and uh if you buy those assets and hold them they should outperform cash over time just because that's how our economies are structured um you know that's they're set up that way to kind of for the capital formation process so you know that's kind of the first way that you can go into markets and make money basically you just buy these assets and you're taking on risk price risk because they can go up or down and you get compensated for that risk over time because if you didn't didn't get compensated for that risk no one would invest right you know there would be no point so uh, that's like kind of the first and like the, the primary way that people make money in markets. Um, and then, you know, the, the second way is, you know, you can go into markets and you can make a bets. You can try to pick stocks that are going to kind of outperform the broad market, or you can try to time the market, you know, buy low, sell high, that type of thing. Uh, and so kind of in the asset management space, you know, the, the former approach, uh, that I was discussing is, you know, referred to as beta and the latter approach is referred to as alpha and you know 
these these approach these different approaches they have different characteristics. So beta is typically like cheap and reliable. Like you know you can go just buy index funds and you can hold them and they're really cheap. And if you just wait long enough, you know they should give you a good return over time. And then you know alpha is really difficult. You you know you have to you know essentially you have to know you have to know or have some information about markets that is not the consensus, right? So it's it's very difficult. It's you know time consuming, research wise. There's trading costs. There's all these things. It's it's uh, it's a very difficult process. So you know I think for the average person, it's like much easier and prudent to stick to the former approach, where you're just kind of buying good quality diversified asset portfolios and holding them. Um, but that being said, you know we all like to get naughty sometimes. We all like to. You know, we like to think we know something we that you know the average market participant doesn't know, or um, you know, there, there, there's a certain allure with trading markets that you can you know make a lot of money. So, you know, if um, and you know, while it's probably like you know advantageous for the average person to kind of stick to the former approach, where you're just kind of passively holding a diversified portfolio, uh, if you're like any type of DIY investor or you know like in markets enthusiast and you're like following this stuff and like you know interested in it it's like you know behaviorally it might be okay to like take a little bit of your overall like net worth and like put it toward trying to like trade a little bit uh, just because that can you know get giving yourself a chance to do that can maybe make you hold on to your you know long-term portfolio like e- it can make it a little easier you know so um if you can be disciplined in kind of separating those things, like, hey, this is this is my good, healthy, stable, long-term portfolio, and I'm going to take a little bit of money to kind of, you know, see what I can do in the markets. Um, so that being said, you know, if you're going to venture into this this second area that I'm talking about, where you're making bets in the markets, um, options contracts essentially could be a good vehicle to do that because. Uh, they offer a very asymmetrical risk re- reward profile. Um, so, you know, like we were talking about before, if you buy an options contract, there's a good chance that it just ends up going to zero, expiring worthless. Um, if you're kind of wrong about where the price of the underlying asset ends up, um, so you know, there's a very defined risk. You know exactly how much you're going to lose, and it's whatever you paid for the, those options contracts. Um, but they, if you you know, if you do end up being right about that investment, um, you know, they options can have a lot more upside relative to if you just like bought or sold the underlying asset. So you know, that's why uh, that, that you know that's why they could be like a potentially attractive vehicle for this kind of latter type of approach to investing that I uh, talked about. So you know, definitely not like. You're not buying these and holding these as like long-term investments, you know. But if you're going to go into markets and you're going to take bets, like it could be a good way to do it because you have a good, you know, you have limited downside with a, a you know a lot more upside. So like a good example of this is like it, let's say that you are really bearish about the stock market and uh, you want to kind of express that bet. You know, you want to short stocks or bet against stocks to try to make a little extra money. Um, so there's, you know, you could ex- there's a couple of ways you could express this bet. I mean, there's infinite ways, but you know, you could go and short, you know, the the spy ETF, for example. So short the broad stock market, and let's say you're doing that with kind of a small, you know, a small amount of your portfolio because you're being responsible and you're saying, all right, I'm going to keep most of my money in this larger portfolio. So let's say hypothetically you have $100,000 in your portfolio and you're going to dedicate 5% of that to trying to place this short trade on the stock market. If you went and outright shorted the SPY ETF with your $5,000 and let's say you nailed it, like the stock market crashes 50% and you perfectly timed the entry and you perfectly took your profits uh, you know, at the bottom and so you made 50% on this trade. You know, you would have made twenty five hundred dollars, and right. you know that's great. great. That's a great. yeah, that's a great return on your investment. But you know, um, relative to your kind of overall portfolio, like that doesn't, you know, that didn't move the needle a whole lot. Um, 
So, you know, let's say you took the same $5,000 and, you know, placed the same, expressed the same bet in the options market. So you bought puts, for example, on the SPY ETF. Um, and, you know, this, you know, the way you construct this trade can differ a lot because you, you know, there's a lot of different strike prices you can choose from. There's a lot of different expiration dates you can choose from. But let's say, you know, you choose you, ch you choose these parameters and you you get them right and you're you know the same thing happens the stock market crashes 50 percent you take your profits and uh you know you could potentially make like i don't know like three to ten x on that trade you know depending on how how you constructed it right so right um you know that's like you know what is that like fifteen thousand to i don't know like a lot you you can make a lot more money on that trade in the options market than if you uh, just outright shorted the underlying asset. So, uh, you know, that's that's re the real reason that, you know, if you're gonna venture into this trading, bet making bets in the market space, like that options would be maybe a, a good vehicle to do that in. Yeah. And uh, maybe it'd be helpful to just like very quickly give our backgrounds and why we think that we're gonna do well at trading options. Um, I'll start us off. Uh, you know, originally my background is not in finance at all. I literally was an electrical engineer before um, I went to business school and then became um, an investment banking associate for about a year. Uh, but again, want to make very clear for those that haven't, you know, followed this channel very long. Um, investment bankers do not actively trade stocks. Those are traders. Those people normally have like PhDs in some sort of math or you know, quantitative finance, um, you know, and are much, much smarter than I am for sure. Um, and truthfully, I know nothing about trading or options. And people often ask me, ask me for my like stock trading advice. And I'm just like, please don't ask me. Um, an investment maker is like more akin to like a real estate agent, truthfully, you know, you buy and you sell businesses. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to be good at all. Uh, but if you guys want to play along at home or at least, you know, pick who you think is going to be doing better at this challenge, uh, use hashtag Team Jerome or hashtag Team Maddox uh, to show your support. Um, and Maddox, tell, tell the people why, why you think you're qualified. Um, I personally think you have a little more qualifications than I do. But, yeah. Uh, well, I, yeah, I disagree with that. I don't think anyone has more qualifications than other anyone else to go into the markets and make money. I think it's mostly very random. Um, but yeah, anyway, you can also use team neither if you think we're both just going to lose all our money. I think that's the most uh, probable outcome of this. <laughs> <laughs> stop stop telling people that. They're not going to watch this video. But uh, yeah, so I'm primary, primarily, uh, my primary responsibilities are as a realtor. Uh, that's how I spend most of my day-to-day uh, I think it's funny that you mentioned that your investment banking is more akin to real estate because I, I feel like we've found a lot more commonality over real estate and investment banking than we have like investment stuff, you know, like I feel like the, the, those things actually do match up a lot more. But uh, I feel like, the, yeah, the average person probably doesn't understand that. But uh, anyway, uh, the first investment I ever made was I, I bought a car. I bought a I don't know if you remember this. I bought a, an Audi back in, in college, and it was, a, it, it was the worst investment I've ever made because I tried to sell it the next year after I studied abroad and spent all my money, and I like lost, I sold it for like 50% less. Uh, so that was my first lesson in markets. Don't buy, put all your money into depreciating assets. Um, but you know, following that, I was like, oh, hey, like I need to figure out like how to actually invest and stuff like that. So. I started, you know, getting into markets and, you know, I did a little bit of discretionary trading and, you know, that didn't go super well and it didn't go terribly, but I uh, eventually gravitated to more systematic approaches of investing. So uh, learning how to code and using code to kind of evaluate and systematize your investment process. So I spent the latter part of the better part of five years or so, um, building and developing uh, systematized asset allocation strategies. So kind of that former um, approach to investing that I was talking about where, you know, you're essentially investing in broad diversified asset classes uh, that you're holding for a long time, but 
you're you're trying to optimize that through uh, with code and machine learning and that type of thing. Um, but yeah, I uh, I have a master's in finance for what that's worth. Um, I don't I don't know that it's worth much. I feel like I've learned I learned more from my uh, uh, my minor in philosophy. I feel like that has served me better in markets than my my yeah than my formal education in finance. Uh, bachelor's in economics as well. Um, I am a licensed investment advisor. I have a small investment advisory firm. I uh, I do some consulting and um, programming for other institutional investors. Um, but uh, so yeah, I don't you know not that any of those things make me any more equipped to go into this uh, this new endeavor that we're both getting into and being more successful. But you know that's my experience for what it's worth. Well, I mean. You know, we'll we'll see how this goes. You know, in in terms of uh, trading strategies, I've got I've got a couple of tricks up my sleeves. I don't have any tricks. I have uh, I just have I have yolos. <laughs> <laughs> just hail mary passes all the way. Okay, well, um, you know, one last question before maybe we wrap this up. Uh, how is this any different than us just walking into Vegas, slapping a thousand dollars down on the table, and just making willy nilly random bets on roulette? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, honestly, I, I I don't think it's any different. I actually think it's I I think in the way <laughs> I think in the way that it's different is uh, when you go into the casino, you know that you're disadvantaged, or you know the like exact probabilities at which you're disadvantaged, right? So like it's pretty like commonly known that um, you know the casino has like a two percent edge so they you know they win 52 percent of hands i guess that's cards i don't know if all the slot machines and stuff have the same probabilities but uh yeah anyway like um you know that i feel like that's the main difference and you know the most you know i i, I like to follow the research of some of the most sophisticated asset managers in the world um and you know they openly talk about like only being right on like fifty five percent of the bets they make. So, um, so yeah, like um, even the be- even the best of the best only have like a five percent edge. You know, so like they're mo- they're they're wrong like forty five percent of the time. So, and you know these are these are firms with hundreds of PhDs and you know tons of resources and you know they can afford all the like top like high-end data and you know they could have all these sophisticated ais and you know all that type of stuff and so we're going up against that and so like if they only have a five percent edge like i don't think there's any reason to think that we can do better than that (laughs) we can get lucky we could for sure get lucky so we're essentially treating this as uh you know as you would on fan duels when you're betting on tom brady throwing a 60 yard touchdown every week Whatever is that? Is that still relevant? Tom Brady doesn't even play sports anymore. I don't know, man. I don't know about sports ball, but I know that if I know everyone on on those sports betting sites, I know that they're legit and they're they're taking it very seriously. So, <laughs> well, okay. So we'll be putting out new episodes of this show probably about once every two to four weeks, just depending on how actively we are going to be trading. Probably not going to be making trades every single week or every single day, even. Um, and, of course, based on how much you guys like the series, uh, the more people that watch, the more people that, you know, uh, interact with us here, the more of these episodes that we'll make. Um, and in each episode, we'll go over the specific trades that we make, our thought processes, uh, maybe like general market information that made us make those decisions. And finally, of course, showcase our total portfolio value at the end of that recording. If you guys are excited for this new show, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out because we're having fun with it, and hopefully you're going to be seeing a lot more of Maddox on this channel. As always, thank you guys for watching this video, and we'll catch you guys next time. Peace.